Good evening, North Brandon Church family. You know, who would have ever thought that we would have taped off pews, that we would be dropping off and picking up communion to, uh, to meet together virtually? I never thought this day would come, and yet here it is. I am so honored that you've asked me to be a part of your uh, Wednesday uh, Bible study series. It's a great honor that you would tune in and, and watch tonight. And, and so I am humbled that you would do that, and so thank you so much for doing that. But I will also tell you right now that I'm very disappointed that this is the way that we are doing this. I was really looking forward to coming down and meeting you guys. Some of you I know, but, but most of you I do not. And I was wanting to uh, get to see you guys and, and, and get to shake hands with you and, and just get to know you a little bit. Those of you who have uh, loved on Greg and Beth and Olivia and that you mean so much to them and know that they mean so much to you. It, it just means a lot for me to know that they are taken care of and that you're a big reason for that. So thank you for being such good family to them uh, from my perspective. Thank you for asking me to speak with you tonight, and I'm so looking forward to our Bible study as we look at the idea of growing in the Spirit. I am convinced that growing in the Spirit is extremely important because I believe the conversation of the Holy Spirit is an important conversation, an important Bible study to get into. And so tonight, I want to look at the Spirit of God, and I want to look at how the Spirit of God works in our lives and to grow in the Spirit. Before we get into that study, though, I want to make two disclaimers. Number one, uh, if you tuned in tonight thinking, well, this is Robert Rawson, I know him. Uh, no, it's not. It, I guess it is technically. I'm Robert William, but uh, my dad is a great gospel preacher, and I love him so much. And if you think you're getting him tonight, uh, he's coming in two weeks. And uh, please come back and hear him speak. Uh, he'll do a much better job than I'm going to do tonight. But I am thankful that I had this opportunity. So, uh, Appreciate that for sure. The second disclaimer is, as we study the Holy Spirit, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, there, there's not a lot of study that's done from time to time, and there's a di differing ideas, differing thoughts about the Spirit. And as we study tonight, if I say something that challenges you, uh, please reach out. Uh, Greg has my number. I'm not that hard to find. Get a hold of me, and let's study God's Word together, because in the end, we want to all grow in our knowledge and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the walk that we have with Him. So again, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. I look forward to getting into our time of Bible study together this evening. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had a moment where someone said something and it kind of reminded you of just how blessed you were? This idea that you didn't recognize your blessing, you hadn't thought about the blessing that you had until someone sort of pointed it out to you. When I was 16 years old, I was talking with a friend of mine, and, and in our conversation, we were talking about parents and how life was going, and, and, and I think I was probably complaining a little bit about a decision that was made that I didn't think was fair or just or whatever, and uh, as I was talking, she said to me, I wish that my parents loved me the way that your parents love you. Now, as she said that, I recognized and realized, wow, I'm blessed and it meant a lot coming from her because of the situation she was in. She had a father who was an alcoholic and, and ultimately ended up passing away when she was about 15 years old because of the disease that he had. And, and in this moment, as she said that, I counted my blessings, but I also recognized that I had these blessings before I actually counted them. This happens to me sometimes as a minister, and I work with people, and I, I hear some of the problems that they're having within their family between spouses or maybe with their children, and, and I walk away from that conversation, and I think, I am blessed to have the wife and children and family that I have. And that blessing was there all along, but it took somebody pointing it out for me to really appreciate it. That's happened to me with my health. I've gone to visit people in the nursing home or hospital or, or maybe just having a conversation with someone who is sick, and I realize I am blessed. And that blessing of good health was there all along. I just didn't recognize it until somebody brought it to my attention. Tonight, I want to bring to your attention the blessings that we have in the Spirit. 
You know, those blessings have been there all along as followers and believers in God. That, that blessing that was given to us as we began our journey with Him. But I have a feeling that many times we don't recognize those blessings until maybe someone brings it to our attention. Maybe you know someone, maybe you are the someone who is struggling on your spiritual journey. When I talk with folks and they say, I'm just struggling, it's been, it's been a real challenge for me in my, my walk with God right now. Oftentimes, I tell them, it's time to read Romans chapter 8. It's one of my favorite passages of Scripture. And the reason it's one of my favorite passages of Scripture is because it's about the Christian assurance that we have. This new walk that we have. And in this passage, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 14 times. I love the end of the passage, and you've probably gone to it a lot. There at verse 28 and following, the idea that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, who are called according to His purpose. Who can be against us? The idea that nothing can stand against God is brought to our attention. That nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. That we are more than conquerors. Aren't those exciting things? Those things that are blessings to us. But the beginning part of this passage, as we look at the first 27 verses, the idea is there are blessings that we have that are a direct result of the Spirit of God. And they're blessings that we need to count and consider. And they've been there all along. We just need to recognize them. As we look at the first four verses, we see the Spirit of God is a major part of guiding our steps. It's a part of our walk with Him. Verse 1 starts by saying, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The Spirit guides our steps. It's in the Spirit where we walk, not with the flesh, according to verse 4, but we walk according to the Spirit. That's the journey that we have, the blessing that we have, being a child of His. The Spirit of God is also important in the resurrection this idea of the resurrection is important to all of us as believers. It's what we recognize and realize that Christ came, that He conquered death. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but the Spirit is a part of that resurrection. That's right. Look at verse 11 and we see the resurrection because we recognize and realize that this is not what it's all about. This body that we have is not supposed to live forever. This body is wearing out. I can tell you that this body is wearing out. You know, there's a time when I was younger that I, would, I could play ball and I could play softball half the night and, and I would get up the next morning and I would be sore for a little bit. But boy, I got over it pretty quick. Now, I, I don't play softball. I, I don't do anything. And I'll go to bed and I'll wake up the next morning just as sore as I used to wake up. And it takes me a lot longer to get over it. And the reason for that is because this body wears out. But I'm looking forward to a new body, a glorious body, a body that is a res part of the resurrection, and that resurrection is a part of the Spirit of God. Listen to verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you... Did you catch that? The blessing that we have in the Spirit is that the Spirit of God takes part in the resurrection. He goes on to say, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. What a blessing it is to have the Spirit of God within us. I think my favorite part of this passage is the next part coming up. Beginning at verse 12 through 17, because the Spirit of God changes our relationship with God. The Spirit of God within us allows us to call God Father, because the Spirit of God takes part in the adoption of us. You know, as the church began there in Acts 2, as Peter and the rest were preaching, they laid the death of Jesus at the feet of those people. They said, it is your fault that this happened. And their hearts were pricked, verse 37 said, and they cried out, what do we do? And Peter responded to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission or forgiveness of sin. Don't stop reading there. And you shall receive the gift of the Spirit. The Spirit of God takes part in the adoption. It allows us to be different in our walk. Listen to verse 14 and following. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Did you catch that? If you are led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. 
Verse 15 says, You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. In the Greek here, those two words are actually the same. You understand the process. You've probably been to middle school before. Let me present it to you this way. Have you ever heard somebody say, do you like him or do you like him like him? Does that make sense? Do you like him or do you like him like him? We know by putting those two words, same words together, it changes the meaning. Well, guess what? In Greek, when you put Abba, Abba side by side, it changes the idea. It's saying Father, Father. It is the most intimate and close way that we can call God Father. And that is possible because of the Spirit of God. Don't you love verse 17? If we are adopted, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It changed who we are. The Spirit of God is a blessing in our lives. The Spirit of God is a help in our lives. As, as we look closer at the Word of God and we get to verses 26 and 27, we recognize the Spirit of God plays a part in our everyday walk as well. It plays a part in our prayer life. Listen to what verse 26 and 27 say. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. I want to pause for just a second. That word helps there is an active verb. It's about an action. It's not as though the Spirit is just sitting back going, well, if you need me, reach out to me. It, it's not that way. The word help there is to share the load. It would be like we were moving a couch and, and maybe I grab one end and then you shared the load, you would pick up on the other. That's the process that's being talked about here in our prayer life. That as we are, as the next part of the Scripture says, weak some versions say or bring the, the idea of in our infirmities. This weakness means without strength. When we got nothing else. Now remember this passage is for those who are worn out. For those who are struggling with the spiritual journey. And here is the Spirit showing up to guide us. To help us celebrate the resurrection. This new life that is to come. To be a part of the adoption so that we can cry out, Abba, Father. And as we're at a spot where we just don't know what else to say. And we just don't know what else to do. And when we are without strength, oh, the Spirit. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Did you see with the Spirit showing up again? To help us in our time of need. I wish that um, you guys would have met my, my great uncle Richard. Richard was born with Down syndrome. And uh, he is so important to our family. Uh, he was a special young man. He is what I feel like, uh, what God, uh, the, the purest person that he could be. He was full of love. And as you, uh, if you would have ever met him, he would have shaken your hand. If you'd have let him, he'd have hugged your neck, and he wouldn't have cared that COVID-19 existed. He would have hugged your neck. That's how much he would have loved you. Richard, though, as, as awesome as he was, he needed his family. He needed his mother and his dad. He needed his sister. And, and ultimately, he needed my aunts to be a part to help him because, well, he couldn't take care of himself. Oh, he could feed himself, but he couldn't prepare the food. And he, he couldn't take care of things like he needed to by himself. Richard had his own language. If you ever saw us as a family at McDonald's, Richard would walk up to the counter and he would do his hand like this. Now, when that happened, a lot of times the person on the other, end of the other side of the counter would look at him and smile and go, hey. Well, Richard wasn't waving at him. Matter of fact, he was placing an order. And when that happened, the family would step in and intercede on his behalf. You see, we knew and understood that this meant French fries. Now, I know you're going, how does that mean French fries? Well, he had seen the commercial for McDonald's. And those French fries would dance in that little French fry box. And so he started doing his fingers like that to say French fries. And Richard was a man after my own heart. He wanted a large French fry for McDonald's. 
And it took us interceding for him to help him in that moment of weakness where he could not help himself. The Spirit steps in. When we have nothing left, when we can't do anything about it, the Spirit steps in and with groanings which we don't understand, which we cannot utter, steps in and intercedes on our behalf. Helps in our time of weakness. What a blessing it is to have the Spirit. But i got to warn you, this blessing as we find out in verse 27 is not for everyone. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's important to me. That's important. It should be important to you. Back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, the American Express Company had a commercial. You might remember that commercial. It, It was the idea you would see somebody going to a counter or going on a trip and they would take out that American Express card. And, and, And the slogan was membership has its privileges. This is not a moment of exclusion where we're leaving people out. But the blessings that we find in the Spirit are for those who have the Spirit within them. Oh, the blessings that we find in the Spirit. And Spirit is important to us. And since it's important to us, we want to look at this idea of growing In the spirit. Uh, I don't know what Greg was doing. I'm going to take a moment to pause just for a second. Greg gave me this topic of growing in the spirit. And so I was excited about it and I got to thinking about it. And I I grabbed my Bible concordance and I began to do some research and looking. And and I guess Greg was just trying to embarrass me. I guess he was trying to make me look bad. And and, and because he, I guess he's trying to get a better Christmas present or something from my parents. I don't know what he was doing. But here's what I found or struggled to find anyway. There's not a Bible passage that says, and thus ye shall grow in the Spirit. Now, you might can find one. Please send it to me if you do. But I couldn't find one that said, grow in the Spirit. And yet, I'm convinced that it is important to grow in the Spirit. I think it's important to have growth. Growth is important, isn't it? I don't know how many of you remember when Olivia was born. She was a preemie. She was the size of my shoe. Her head was about the size of a little baseball. And I remember looking at her and thinking, wow. We prayed for her and we were excited as she began to grow I remember getting text messages from Beth and Greg as they would, they would tell us a little bit she had gained this much, and it was really this much, meaning this many ounces, just small little growth days. But every time we got the report and there was a little bit of growth, man, there was some excitement that happened. My boys, one of them's 19, one of them's 14, and uh, every year on their birthday, they get up and they know that I'm coming and we're going to meet, and in their closet, in the, inside their closet door, we have a growth chart. And we can know exactly how tall they were on that birthday. And it's exciting. My 19-year-old son, this year, as he got up, I said, you know what's going to happen next? And he smiled, and he went to the closet, and we stood there and marked the spot. And as a father, it's exciting to see growth. It's exciting to go and see this moment where growth takes place. Most of you don't know me and don't know my other career. I'm a high school teacher. And uh, one of the things that we get judged on as a teacher is the growth of our students. I don't know how Mississippi education system works, but uh, the kids take a test. And at the end of the year, that test shows their growth. And, and a lot of thought is put into this and a lot of efforts put into this. And honestly, a lot of salaries go into this based on growth. Growth is important. And if the Spirit of God is so important within us, I believe it's important then that we grow in the Spirit. The passage that you've been studying over the past few weeks, this, this idea in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, this growth that's happening, add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Verse 8 says, And if these things are in you and they abound, you will neither be ineffective or unfruitful. Did you catch that? 
the subjects that you've been going through is this idea of growing and the importance of growing. Growth matters. It mattered to Jesus. In John chapter 15, he tells a story of his father and himself. He says that the father was the vine dresser in verse number 1. But Jesus said that he was the vine. I want you to listen to the next few verses. Every branch that is in me does not bear fruit. He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now you are able to clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the branch, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am him bear much fruit. Jesus is expecting us to be in him. And if he is the vine, ultimately we become the branches. And those branches will be expected to bear fruit. The fruit that we find ultimately is what's expected. And the fruits that don't, or the vines that, sorry, the branches that don't bear fruit will be taken away. You know, as I think about this passage, a younger Christian, I, I used to think, well, this makes sense. It makes perfect sense. You know, as you drive by and you see a tree maybe that's, that's green everywhere and they've got one branch that's dead. Well, the, this, Jesus is talking about this. He, he's talking about going to that branch and cutting it away. Go back to verse 2. The branch that's going to be trimmed and cut away is the one that doesn't bear fruit, not the one that's dead. It could easily be a branch that is green and looks the part and yet doesn't bear fruit, will be pruned, will be cut away. And even those that are bearing fruit will be pruned so that it will bear more fruit. There's an expectation that we bear fruit. This is found in Mark chapter 11. It's a story where, where we see Jesus and his disciples walking out of Bethany. And he was hungry and he saw a fig tree that had leaves on it. Now, something you need to understand, and I, you might already know this, but when fig trees put out in, uh, back in that region, the figs grew first and then the leaves grew. So as Jesus sees this tree afar, afar off and he sees the leaves, the assumption is it's got fruit. Well, when he came to it, he found there was nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. And in response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from this ever again. And the disciples heard it. When you get down to verse 20, it says, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Verse 21 says, And Peter remembered saying to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. There was an expectation that this fig tree would have figs on it. I'm convinced there's an expectation that we who are walking and led by, led by the Spirit must produce fruit. I don't know whether the corn is growing great down in uh, the Jackson, Mississippi area or not, but I can tell you up here in Crockett County, the corn is tall. And as you uh, drive by these corn fields, you've got these stalks that are beautiful and green. Can you imagine how disappointing it would be for those farmers to come to this field where everything looked beautiful only to find no corn on those stalks? You know, I wonder how disappointing it is to God to see a church full of people who look the part, who look as though they're ready to produce fruit only to find that there is no fruit. You see, if the Spirit of God is within us and we see through Scripture that fruit is representing a growth, well, wouldn't it make sense that there be fruit of the Spirit? Greg, I hope this is the direction that you wanted this conversation to go as we consider the fruit of the Spirit. You see, the Spirit, we've already talked about how much of a blessing it is to have the Spirit within us, to guide us, to be a part of the resurrection, to change our relationship with God, to help us in our prayer. Th those are blessings that we have from the Spirit. And the expectation is that we grow, and if we grow, we will produce fruit 
of the Spirit. The passage starts back in verse 16 that I want to look at in Galatians chapter 5. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, for you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Then the next passage talks about the works of the flesh and what we see there. But I want you to get, skip down to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. I don't want you to think that we just have love or that we just have joy. The fruit of the Spirit are all of these things. These are what we should be showing as we walk and live every day. As we consider the blessings that we have in the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control should be what the rest of the world sees in us. And if they're not there, I'm going to take you back to where Jesus said, the vine dresser will cut you away. The same idea with the fig tree that was not producing fruit was withered up. The fruit of the Spirit is important. It is what we should be growing in our walk. You know, that should be a definite change in who we are because the Spirit of God is within us. As we consider this, then maybe we say, well, Bobby, I think that's important. I recognize that growth in the Spirit matters. And I want to produce, I want the Spirit of of God within me to produce fruit. I want to love. I I want to find joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control in my life. How can I do that? How can I grow? Well, I I just want to take you to a normal day of growth. How, How do we encourage our children to grow? How do we grow physically? Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's eat a good diet, it's move around, and then it's repeat. The the idea that we eat what we need to, that we get the right balance of food, that we then move and exercise, and then we start over the next day and do it again. I'm going to suggest that that's not far from what we should be doing spiritually. I'm going to suggest that we feast on the Word of God. You know, as we look at Peter's account in 1 Peter chapter 2 and beginning at verse 1, it says, Lay aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy, envy and all evil speakings. Now listen to the next part. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that they may grow thereby. John writes this about Jesus as he starts his book in John chapter 1 verse 1, that the idea that that Jesus was the Word, that Jesus was there from the beginning, that the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the Word of God that was Je- that the Word was Jesus. You remember Jesus declared Himself as the bread of life. We should be feasting on His Word. You know, it's within the Word of God that I believe we find our peace, that we find the challenges answered. You know, if we look at Ephesians chapter 6, the the whole armor of God, right? We're told to put on this whole armor. And in verse 17, we are given the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In the Word of God, we see that This walk or this relationship and this worship changes. You know, it's there in John chapter 4 that we see the Spirit changing this worship, isn't it? Remember as Jesus is talking with the Samaritan woman, and she comes to the conclusion that he is different, that that he, he knows things that maybe he shouldn't have known. And she talks about worship. She changes the subject. She says, my people, being the Samaritans, we go up the mountain to worship and your people go to Jerusalem. Now, the reason the Samaritans went up the mountain is because, well, God is up above. And if we go up the mountain, we'll be closer to God. And so they went up there to worship. And those in Jerusalem went because that was where, well, the temple was. She said, what do you say we do? 
And Jesus' response, you'll remember, is this. That there's coming a time, and now is, when neither your people will go up the mountain and my people will go to Jerusalem. But there's coming a time when you will worship God in spirit. For God is a spirit, and they that worship Him will worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, when we feast on the Word of God, we see God's walk, or our walk with God transforming and changing. It is on God's Word that we fill up. And as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, thereby to grow, or to grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The next thing I would encourage you to do is exercise. To get out and do you know, if you look at the book of James chapter 1 at the, at the end, it, it says the idea that we should be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. It takes us to this idea of true religion to take care of the orphans and the widows. It's about doing something. It's not about going to the mirror and looking at ourselves and going, well, uh, okay, and then walking away. It's about putting into action. And then he goes into chapter 2 and he says, you can talk about your faith all you want. I'm going to show you my faith by what I do. You know, it's mentioned several times in Colossians chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that whatever we do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. There's an expectation that we are going to do. I'm convinced that when we feed on the Word of God, we'll find a lot that there is to do and to be done. If we will go out in the name of Jesus, even with just a cup of water, I think we'll change the world. And one of the things that we do here in our church family is uh, around Christmas time, uh, the last or the first weekend of December, we have an ark day. We go out and we practice acts of random kindness, A R K. And throughout the year, we collect money. We just set aside a little uh, box, and people just kind of drop a few. Sometimes a few pennies and sometimes a few dollars in. And the last couple of years, we have been able to do that, and we've collected a decent amount of money. But on that Saturday morning, we go out with that money, and we just hand it out. There's no qualification. So far, we have helped with haircuts, and we've helped with groceries, and we've helped with uh, uh, different food items, and we put gas in people's car. It's been amazing to see people's response. And, and what's amazing to me is this. They take that and then they begin to share and talk about it on Facebook and other places. What's neat, in a moment where we didn't go out talking about Jesus, where we went out acting like Him, others begin to talk about Jesus. Isn't that something? When we put into action, when we exercise, when we do all that we can in the name of the Lord, I believe we grow. And then I encourage you to repeat. You know, I think sometimes we can get discouraged and I think sometimes we can struggle to get through each day. But I'm going to encourage you as Paul did the church in Galatians in chapter 6 and verse 9, where he says, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. I'm going to encourage you to keep pressing on, to keep getting up every morning, to keep feasting on the Word of God, to keep doing all that you can for Jesus. Repeat it over and over again. Paul said it this way in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and following, Not that I've already obtained or am already perfected, but I press on that I might lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind and I reach forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Paul says, I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to keep pressing on and I'm going to encourage you because the spiritual blessings are real. The fact that the Spirit guides us the fact that the Spirit helps in the resurrection, the fact that the Spirit is a part of the relationship change that I have with God, that I can call Him Father, the fact that the Spirit helps in my prayers, I want to get up every morning and feast on His Word. And hopefully in doing so, I grow in the Spirit. 
and love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control become the fruit of the Spirit in me. As Paul drew towards the end of his life, he said it this way. He, he brought to light this idea of it being a continuation. He said, I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Each day he repeated over and over again until he was able to say, I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. Now listen to the next part. And not to me only, but to all who loved his appearing. I hope you've loved his appearing. And I hope that you count the blessings that we have in the Spirit of God. And I hope that as you grow, you begin to see the fruit of the Spirit in your life. The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. The life that we have been called to is a life that's blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Because God loved us so much that He sent Jesus to die for us. And it's in His love that we receive forgiveness. By His wounds we are healed. By His blood do we get a new start. This evening, I don't know what you might be battling. I don't know how your life is. I don't know what, what you're struggling with. But I know that God loves you. And I know that He wants you to grow in the Spirit so that you produce fruit. And a fair warning to those who are thinking, well... I'm just pretty much done with this. I'm just going to cash it in the rest of the way. Remember, if you're not growing, you're dying. You're dead. So I encourage you to grow in the Spirit. Let's close in prayer this evening. Our Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you have given us, for the life that you have called us to. We're thankful for your Spirit and, and the way that the Spirit works within us to guide us, to, to, uh, to help us through the resurrection, to allow us to call you Father. Father, in this moment of prayer, I, I don't know exactly how I should pray or even what should be said, but Father, we pray that the words are coming to you in a way that's as powerful to help us on our journey with you day by day. Father, we know the importance of fruit in our lives. We know that that's a sign of the growth that we have. Father, we ask that you bless the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Help us each day to feast on your word, to get out and be a doer, not just a hearer only. And each day, Father, to get up and to press on to the higher call that we have been called to. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you for your Spirit. Thank you for loving us and allowing us to call you Father. And we look forward to the inheritance that is reserved for those who have been called. Father, we thank you for all things. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen.